Okay, so my name is Eric Holman. I am a graduate of the Florida Center for Electronic Communication from the year 2000, May of 2000. And I also went on to work there for two years from May of 2000 to May of 2002. And uh, after I worked there, I went back to my alma mater of my undergraduate studies at the Columbus College of Art and Design in Columbus, Ohio. And I've been teaching there full-time ever since, since 2002 until present 2011. So I teach classes in computer animation, which is what I studied at um, Florida, Atlantic, Florida Atlantic University at the Florida Center for Electronic Communication, CEC. And I also have been mainly teaching video classes and motion graphics classes as of the past few years, So my, uh, which is kind of interesting because I was focusing on that as well during my graduate school years as well, trying to mix digital video as well as uh, motion graphics, digital comp compositing with my 3D animation work. So it's kind of funny that um, some of the side things that I was kind of trying to incorporate with Maya back then are now things that I'm really really teaching even more of now. <laughs> Other things that I'm doing right now uh, are major developments. Um, obviously the two really big ones are definitely you know getting married to my wife Lisa in 2008 and we just had a our first child, our baby girl, back in April of this year 2011. So those are two major 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 things that have happened in my life that I'm really really thankful for thankful for and oh yeah I, I also um, Lisa and I we bought a house in Dublin Ohio which is a suburb of Columbus and we've been here since 2007 so so as of my life right now I feel very fulfilled I mean I have a professional side I've been teaching full-time which is what I went to graduate school for in the first place I decided in 1997 when I was a student at an art school at CCAD that I wanted to become a teacher and in 2000, I'm sorry, in 1998 I found out about uh, CEC and I applied and got accepted and I went down there and I, my main goal was to become a teacher. I wanted to become a full-time teacher and actually when I first even went down there I was like, hey, I love this place. This is a place where you can expand as an artist and grow as an artist and still do research assignments and learn about so many different things at this wonderful place and be surrounded by you know, really interesting people, not to mention you know Ed Skellings, Poet Laureate of Florida, as well as you know Fran McAfee, Diane Newman, as well as other great uh, faculty members and interesting classmates, uh, Caleb Strauss. Uh, Frank Balzano, <laughs> who still makes me laugh to this very day on Facebook. Yeah, so when I went to graduate school, my intent was to do, you know, personal, self-expressive, yet fairly innovative art animations, you know, using the computer animation canvas as a, a painted canvas, but making it a three-dimensional world. That was my dream, that was my goal, um, and that definitely didn't kind of fit in with you know, the computer animation industry or the, the video game industry. But I knew if, if I was going in that direction, I could keep supporting myself in that in what I'm doing by teaching. And that was what my goal was, and I knew that was a realistic goal, and I could, I could definitely um, pursue that realistically. And I've been very, very fortunate to have been teaching pretty much ever since I graduated uh, I've been teaching full-time ever since I graduated from CEC. I mean, I got my teaching experience at CEC when I became a graduate assistant along with Caleb Strauss in the fall of 1999. And that was a fantastic experience to being able to, you know, get myself out of my you know, shy, creative shell and get my put my feet in the fire, which is actually the most important thing that, I, that could have happened to me is to get that real te real world teaching experience and learn how to articulate yourself as well as um, being able to communicate to as many different wide range of students as possible that was really really powerful that was um, probably one of the most important things that I got from my graduate studies was that teaching experience and because of that teaching experience I was able to apply to you know CCAD in 2002 
when there were budget cuts. <laughs> so I had to uh, look for new work and I was lucky to have had a strong enough portfolio. I had a great group of students that I had as students at that time that I could show what work they had produced as um, when I was a, their teacher. And I had many years of teaching experience under my belt already. So because of all, all the help I got from CEC through the years, um, I have to say humbly that I have to be very thankful for, for their help. Actually, over the past year, I've been, or two years or three years, I've been going through my journals. I've always been keeping journals throughout my entire life since, I think, 1993. And I've been going through my journals through my graduate school years and um, my, my all, all four years of my time in Fort Lauderdale when I was um, at the Florida Center for Electronic Communication. And I wrote something down here that I thought was, I found this, this little quote from April 4th, 2000 that I thought was really, really nice, and I, I just wanted to read it to you now. I realized something this late afternoon as I, was, as I was working. Ed Skellings built the center up as a research center and later as a graduate program for computer arts. I took for granted that Ed is doing this for the students and less for himself. I wouldn't have a Master of Fine Arts if it weren't for Ed and his dream. I thanked him of this with all sincerity, and he was deeply appreciative of it. You know, I was going through my journals the other day, and of that um, time period when I was in graduate school, and I was really shocked by how many technical hurdles I was having to go over at that time. Um, like how many computers were breaking down at the time. Um, computers were so much slower. We had so much less hard drive space back then. Um, Backing up our work was, was was all done on jazz disks for that only had a like gigs worth of space. Nowadays you can buy a, a two terabyte hard drive for like under eighty dollars. I mean we're utterly spoiled nowadays compared to just twelve or thirteen years ago, or even ten years ago, or even nine years ago, where th things were just archaic. <laughs> they were so much harder to work with. Now. Ed Skellings, he was the director of the program, and um, Fran McAfee was the head professor as far as teaching all of us students in the graduate program. And um, they were both very instrumental, very different personality types, yet um, two very special, important people, as well as, you know, Dan Newman as well, who was sort of like the mother to us all. And one of the things that Ed was adamant about is that he's he pushed every single one of the students to try their hand at writing poetry and you had to animate it in Maya, this 3D animation program. And this was actually very difficult for a lot of pe a lot of us coming in. Um, some of them had no poetry experience. The only person of my group of classmates was Eddie Bremen that ha was a poet. Um, but we all came from very widely different backgrounds. Some of us um, did have computer animation in our, in our background from different art schools that we, we were at for undergraduate studies. Some of us were graphic designers. Some of us were uh, middle-aged teachers like Fra Frank Balzano. And what was really interesting about mixing poetry with 3D animation was that not many people were doing it at the time. In the late 90s, people were still doing, you know, talking toys or insect movies and what Ed was really pushing for was to use this new medium as an artistic space and to use it for entertainment purposes as well as for, for introspective knowledge or you know, deeper meaning in life. We weren't just using it for entertainment purposes, we were trying to go beyond that as best we could and sometimes in the process you are successful at it, sometimes you're not successful, but that's part of the education process, that's not to be discouraged. And I think that's something that a lot of students have to uh, accept, is you know you need to get your feet wet in order to learn. You have to be able to fail in order to succeed later on. You can't just automatically, boom, you're done, everything's working properly. You know, it's a struggle. And our time especially my time personally at, at in my graduate school years was highly stressful. I mean, I, I was looking back at my journals and I was astonished at the hours that we were putting in back then. I mean, um, 
not irregular that it was 80 hours to 100 hours per week. I, mean, I think at one point it was 120. I mean, you're, you're literally working, I was working from 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night, seven days a week, every week for months. <laughs> I mean, it was the most, probably one of the most stressful time periods of my life. I mean, compared to my life now, you know, as a you know, assistant professor at an art school, you know, uh, having a, a baby and ha being married, I mean, graduate school is, I, th I think it's infinitely more stressful. <laughs> not to say that having a baby is not stressful. <laughs> um, different changes from when I was a graduate student to, to what I'm like now. Um, when I was going through my journals, once again, I was noticing that uh, some of my, I remember um, Chung, was saying that I seemed very goofy a lot, <laughs> which is very, I think that was very true um, when I was a student there. Um, and I think over the years I've I've definitely mellowed quite a bit. I've you know adapted more to the real world. I have a much more grounded personality. I would say now, um, not that I don't think it's a, a a bad thing to play sometimes or to release a sense of whimsy. I mean, if you don't have that child inside of you, I don't think, I think you'll feel dead inside. I really think it's extremely important to still learn how to be, to make fun of yourself. But um, you still have to balance that a great deal. If you're a teacher in the classroom, you have to have a certain tone. But you also want to make sure the students are being, you know, you're educating them as well as give them a little bit of entertainment as well to... Um, keep their attention. <laughs> so as, as in regards to um, my artwork, I've, when I finished graduate school, I actually just kept on making computer animation pieces. And that was the great thing about being a teacher is that I could still keep expressing myself and have the time to express yourself. Um, that was one of the things I was scared about, about going into the animation industry or the video game industry is that I didn't want to be working 60 or 80 hours per week on the computer every single t I mean just to be over I'd be so be so overwhelmed by the time you get back from work why would you want to sit on the computer again and do your own work it'd be ridiculous so what I loved about teaching is that I could keep expressing myself and that to me makes me feel young inside and I, I still try desperately sometimes to find the time to just do a small art project and keep being productive keep being creative keep being artistic and expressing myself and I mean that's something I, I absolutely need to do I want to express myself so um, through the years I've actually done f much fewer and fewer computer animation pieces because I just don't not have the time anymore I mean I realized at a certain point where I was like okay I I need to start dating. <laughs> I need to have a personal life. And computer animation, if you want to be really good at it, you have to dedicate a huge amount of your time. And but there's a certain point where you're just like I need to change. I got I can't keep doing this. So I dedicated my life to, you know, finding my that soulmate, finding that um that per special person to spend your life with and I thankfully found her. And you know, once you have that personal life, you realize you you need to balance your, you know, your love life as well as with your art life. But um, the art products I do the most lately is definitely more video based or motion graphics based, just because it's easier, it's faster, it's more immediate. I like that about it. <laughs> uh, I did a grant funded documentary back in 2004, 2005 called Treasures of the Hawking Hills about artists in the southeastern side of Ohio in the Appalachian area of the Hawking Hills and that was uh, released on DVD back in 2005 and thankfully a lot of the libraries in the state of Ohio picked it up so that was nice nice little achievement but I've also just done other document short documentary shorts um, whenever I see them around or when I work on something I always have my camera with me I'm always taking pictures or taking video wherever I go. It's just a way of expressing myself, a way of capturing life, capturing moments, capturing 
details that I can later document and edit down and create into um, short narratives. And of course I like doing experimental artwork as well. I think that's just as, as interesting and just as um, uh, powerful to, to work on. So um, yeah, I got a little nostalgic a few years ago and I um, dug through my my case full of video mini DV cassettes, tapes, and height footage that I had taken throughout the past 12 years and I took dozens and dozens of hours of footage just a compulsive video videographer <laughs> and I shot quite a bit of footage when I was a graduate student as well as my um, academic years um, academia years as a um, first as a research uh, associate at CEC and then as an assistant professor at CEC. Yeah, Fran and I were talking on Facebook one night about um, the documentary after I, I sent it to him and he watched it um, and he was like, wow, I couldn't believe how nice things were back then. It was like a little, yeah, it was like a mini Camelot and, you know, in a, in a way it was, in a way it wasn't, you know, it's I think we, we like to remember the, the best things about it. I mean, this the great artistic freedom that we had, the ability to express ourselves. Um, I mean, that's that's freedom. That's the most joy you can probably get out of life is that being able to express yourself. Um, and we were doing it as part of our projects, as part of our graduate the uh, theses. I mean, that really was a wonderful time. And it was such an interesting, diverse group of people as well. We had, um, you know, Dhruv, Eddie, Caleb, Frank, um, Karen Matheson, um, Chris Stegel, Karen Sanek, Chung Ching Lao. I hope I'm not forgetting anyone. <laughs> um, um, and of course, uh, Victor and John Mule, Victor DeLeon and John Mule. And of course, uh, Claire. <laughs> you know, like I've been saying, um, I was going through my journals and another quote that I, I remember reading is that I think at the end of our two years in the graduate program I think everyone had gone through a broke uh, a breakup in their relationship or um, all the guys had gone bald so it was that's how stressful it was I mean it was it was a tough time but you know people always talk about you know do you have any regrets or anything like that that's 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 bull, that's ridiculous. I mean, I, you live every day, you work as hard as you can, and I, I felt like I did. <laughs> and it was a wonderful experience. Um, I look at my students now and I'm just, I shake my head at them sometimes. I'm just like, you have it so easy. You mean, you have so much faster computers. Not to say that we didn't have top of the line computers to work on either when I was a student at, at, at CEC, but um, the students are just, you know, they're spoiled now. They everything's so much easier, so much faster. Um, when we were learning Maya back in nineteen ninety eight, it was brand new, it was my one Maya one point oh. So there was very few training manuals and some of the, the training manuals that came with the software program, they had bugs in them or the tutorials were written incorrectly, so it was ridiculous. It was it was so frustrating to learn it. Now you have um, online tutorials to look at. It's infinitely easier to learn these software programs compared to what we were going through. Yeah, the, the funny thing is, is that I think the older you get, the, the happier I'm getting because I feel like I'm, I'm not as stressed out as I used to be. Um, I didn't have as, I don't have as, such massively huge ambitions <laughs> as I did when I was say in my early 20s and you know you know getting married and having a baby I think that that creates this little sense of inner happiness that is just the most fulfilling thing you could ever go through and um, I think I was looking in artwork for fulfillment and and you can, I think, I mean, you will definitely find great fulfillment in artwork, but you also have to balance it out with um, a personal life and, and a, a little sweet little baby girl. I mean, that's, that's bliss right there.
you know what's kind of ironic? Um, I remember Eddie Bremen saying, it's like, it's like, Eric, do you ever talk? Because you don't talk at all. And, you know, here I am. I've been talking for like 20 minutes now. So that's irony for you. Now, looking back at uh, the computer animation industry back when I was a student, you know, in 1998, 1999, and 2000, computer animation was still this, you know, really exciting medium back then. And nowadays, present day, I'm not as excited by it anymore because the industry just, it just kind of went more and more and more photo real. And to me, I, I wanted to make it more like an artistic medium, like like the, the 3D canvas. That was my dream. Like what would a 3D painted canvas, a 3D, or what, what, what would a 3D painting look like? And that's what I wanted to explore when I was a student at CEC. And not many of my classmates really understood what that meant. <laughs> Because they wanted to do, you know, more commercial direction. I wanted to do, I wanted to really explore this medium because it was new, and that's what made it feel like I was in a very ideal like time when things were new, people were exploring, people didn't know what the possibilities really were. The the only computer animated movies back then were, you know, you had Toy Story, you had A Bug's Life, you had Ants, and then you had Toy Story Two. Those were it. Nowadays, you have a new computer made film coming out every month. And, you know, nowadays I just shrug my shoulders and go, hmm, I don't go see it anymore. I'm not excited. They all look the same to me. They're all talking animals. They're all typically, you know, kids' movies. There is a, a few really good, um, more experimental films that are being done out there, but a lot of them don't get seen. They don't get publicized. And that, to me, is, is a great shame. And it really hurts to see that. Um... You know, everything is just, you know, kid-friendly nowadays. They just want to appeal to just the family market. They want to make it very safe, easy, friendly, don't disturb anyone. Just entertain, just entertain. Um, give them pop culture jokes. To me, that's boring. I mean, there's a point where I'm just like, you're just repeating yourselves over and over and over and over again. But, you know, that's the way filmmaking is. That's the way Hollywood, Hollywood works. And that's the reason why I went to teaching instead. <laughs> And I, I went to teaching because I knew that stuff way back when I was a student. I recognized that right away. And I'm glad I did. Um, you know, I always hear stories about people that work in the industry throughout their 20s and 30s, and they're just burnt out. And then they want to go into the academia world and live a more, you know, less stressful life and have a personal life. And I've I'm, I'm been fortunate to, um, you know, already be there. <laughs> and have produced a huge amount of work through the years too. I never stopped working. I never stopped working. And I'm very proud of that. I never stopped writing. I never stopped stopped taking pictures. I never stopped taking, shooting video. I never stopped working in After Effects or uh, Maya. You know, I was always creating. I was a digital artist. And that to me was uh, uh, a great thing. I'm always very proud of the fact that of my work that I've done through the years. Good or bad, at least I tried. At least I, I expressed myself. And I think that's one of the things that really attracted me to the Center for Electronic Communication when I applied as a as a student. Was that they were doing, they were using computer animation as an artistic medium. They weren't just using it for talking animal films. They were making electric poetry, which I thought was a cr really great idea. I like that idea. Yeah, Ed was looking at his own poetry and saying, this is, you know, it's great on the page, yet I want to use this for a whole new art audience. I want to translate my words into visuals and I want to use the 3D canvas to express that. And that's where Fran McAfee came in to start animating his poetry and explore this process. I found that really exciting. The animated pieces from the you know early to mid-90s that may look dated now because of the limitations in technology, yet in their heart, in their soul, they're still very relevant. They still, they still work. 
and in a way, it, they're timeless. They really are timeless. And I think that will always be the edge that those electric poems, <laughs> those electric 3D poems will always have. Even many of us students that produce those, those electric poems in 3D animation, that's the edge that we'll always have over some of these generic uh, 3D an animated films that are just kind of cookie cutter assembly line products that are you know fairly soulless except for Pixar <laughs> but at least these animated poems they will always be relevant because they had soul to them at least they had original vision to them they were from the heart and I think that's what you know Ed really tried to stress in all of us is to speak from yourself learn to self-express even talk, I mean, even um, narrate your own poems, learn how to orate, learn how to articulate yourself, and those are all qualities I learned as a student at CEC. Um, so, you know, all in all, you know, things are still going good. I mean, I fulfilled exactly what I set out to do, become a, um, an assistant professor at a school that teaches, you know, computer arts, media arts, and uh, I've been very fortunate to be doing that ever since I graduated from graduate school, so cheers. <laughs> so, you know, last but not least, uh, thank you to Ed, to Fran, to Diane, um, you know, the three of you were the, the, the triad. You guys were the ones that kept us together. You were the, the family unit, and it always felt like a family. And I think that was always the hardest part of, um, you know, graduating was seeing your group, your family, kind of split apart. That was, I always found that very hard. But, um, you know, it's something you, you always have to deal with. If you're, if you're a teacher, every semester you, you see your students, you know, go away and they move on to something else that's the way of life but life changes and we just move on <laughs> until the end and now Ed, Fran, Diane just to show my appreciation for you and all the years of, of work that you did for me I'm gonna do a strip tease for you now so thank you <laughs> Just kidding.